Joel, first time in 43 years that people won't be packed in Park City. Yeah, it's going to be a lot different. Uh, it, it, it's uh, The atmosphere obviously is not going to be there. It's going to be completely different. But a lot of people who are living uh, in places that typically wouldn't get uh, to see Sundance films now have the opportunity. Uh, they're still limiting the number of people who get to see the films it's, it's, uh, and, and when you can see them. So it still kind of retains the festival setup. Um, and, and there will be Q and A's and, and everything like there would be in person. But yeah, it's gonna. It's it's even even from my standpoint, it's it's a completely different thing. I'm going to be watching movies from my bed, um, which part of that's great. But that there's that part that part of Sundance is always getting to meet. Uh, um, for me, meeting people I work with on a year-round basis, and it's the only time they're in Utah and I get to see them. Uh, for a lot of people, it's the, the chance to just talk movies with other people who love movies. And people in the film industry, it's and a chance to connect. Absolutely. They, they, a lot of the young filmmakers who have films in Sundance, this might not be the film This that they're promoting this year may not be the big film that they uh, make it big on. Um, but it might be the, the, where they make the connection that they need to make that next film. Um, because you are in a proximity to a lot of people. It's not quite the same as you know the, the general public going up there. Um, you won't run into a lot of the wheelers and dealers, but when you actually have a film in the festival, you're kind of sucked into this, this uh, room that you wouldn't be allowed to be in otherwise, and uh, it, it really opens things up. And it, the, being able to say you had a film in Sundance is huge. It's a huge thing for a lot of these people. And it still is. I mean, it's yeah. still Sundance, and they still are very elite. Sure, yes. Uh, there's actually less films in the festival this year than, than typical, so you know, I think there's 70 rather than 100 and something. So, yeah, the ones that made it in here still had to, I mean, it was a fierce competition still to get things in, even though there's less, and maybe even more so. Um, and it's a different year because we're not talking about who's the big star who's coming into town, because the big stars aren't coming into town. Uh, so eventually, after the first couple of days here, we're going to be talking about just movies, right. um, which is, is, is actually really exciting because that's what the festival's about. It is about movies and it's about uh, culture, and, and, and we're going to get a lot of those discussions still, right. just not in person. What about for people like me who've lived in Utah for decades and have never been to Sundance? Well, I, you know, I have I, a chance to watch some of the movies. Yes, you do. Having to fight people. Well, exactly. You know, they, they, they've expanded into the Salt Lake area with the, the festival. That's given the chance for more and more locals. They have local passes, so there are a lot of people who do go up. But there are people who are kind of aware of Sundance, but they don't want to do the drive, or like you said, they don't want to deal with the the, uh, the crowds uh, because there are crowds. Um, and so this does open that up a little bit, so that you could go in on any given day and say, okay, what's available? What can I watch? Um, and there will be a handful of films that you can choose from. And um, in, in a way, you're actually given a little more freedom than you would typically because most of these things sell out. Um, and so, generally speaking, you're kind of tied into, well, I could get tickets for this or this or this. Well, you're going to have a little more options because it's streaming. There's going to be probably, you know, rather than one or two films that you could see, there's probably going to be five films that you could pick between. And you get to see, see the directors and the actors. They're going to still do the Q and A's on the premieres, so we still get some of that interaction. Just not. I mean, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Just not in person. The personable aspect of the festival. Um, if you've never been, it's hard to explain, but there is something wonderful about standing around with a bunch of strangers. Or and, on the bus. Or on the bus. The bus is between films. You're on there for half an hour as you move from theater to theater, and you have people who have nothing in common other than the fact that they just saw a movie or that they uh, love movies. Or, you know, and, and that is enough to have all these crazy conversations. Sometimes it's with filmmakers. Sometimes it's you know, the, the guy sitting next to you might have just made the film that you watched and... You, you don't realize it. You're talking about the film directly with him, and at some point in the conversation, he might say, "Oh, actually, I directed that." And it, it does happen. Or I was, you know, part of the crew, or I did sound design for that. And it's it's marvelous in the sense that it, artists just mingle with everyone else, and it's just kind of this melting pot of that we won't have this year, and hopefully, we'll get back. Well, the pandemic is no human-to-human -human contact. It, exactly. And that's what you're really missing out on is that chemistry, yes. that magic. And, and, and that was what really sets Sundance apart, that and the fact that you see movies that most people haven't seen. I mean, a lot of the other film festivals you go to, they've, the films that are there have been seen by people, right. or they have a big release coming up, and they're very known, and they, we know stuff about it. There's a lot of films at Sundance that they haven't finished the film until, I don't know, like five hours from now. <laughs> You know, they're still working on their final cut, and they're, they have to show it on Saturday. Um, and, and modern technology allows for that. So, they're, they're, I mean, they're literally things that no one has seen completed that the audiences are, are, and the filmmaker and the artist are seeing together for the very first time. 
What are you most looking forward to? You know, I think the thing that I'm going to try to do more films this year than I have in the past couple of years. Um, it's it's hard when you're you're working in, uh, you know, I have my news side of things, and so it's hard to get away from here. Uh, I have planned my Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to watch at least five films a day for those two days. Uh, and while that might sound a little overkill or daunting, it's actually exciting for me because uh, it's not something I get to typically do and, and, and go in blind and see, you know, these these works of art. That but it's all going to be there instead it's of all, having to drive there. Correct. So drive I, between exactly. The I, don't, I don't have to worry about the weather, which is actually a major concern. I commute from Salt Lake City, so going up to Park City has always been a, a chess game mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Uh, there are times where coming back from Park City has been a little more adventurous than I would like. But this, this opens up and gives me, you know, I can watch a movie um, starting at 8 a.m. and have a movie go at, at 10 p.m. Um, and fill in as much as I feel like in between, and, and that's, that's going to be a wonderful thing to do.